So before we get into it, we should probably tell people why we're doing this. This is why we're doing this. This is a demo tape that Paul, uh, one of our good mates, gave us that he's been listening to for about 30 years. And the cheapskate didn't even buy a TDK. It's some random audio gold number. <laughs> but surprisingly, it still works. It still works. Me and Andy worked on what was called an Insonic EPS 16 Plus digital sampler. It had 16 tracks. We had hardly any sound, so I, we were using no. a lot of Andy's samples off his records. This is where we got a lot of our drum sounds. Don't tell the prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our original four-track demo that we produced in 1993 March 1993 and we made it in a studio called Split Level in Edinburgh which is like an old farm building when me and Andy first walked into this studio it was a complete dump to be honest <laughs> uh, it didn't really inspire us with confidence me and Andy didn't have a clue what we were doing we had this big guy that looked like it looks like one of the doctors, that's what I was going to say. I Tom like Baker, the... but Neil had this really uh -huh. calming experience, and Andy was only 18, I'm only 21, and he just, we had like all really, place, eh? he just had this really calming <laughs> experience on us and just totally chilled out, just let us do whatever we want, but kind of reined us in a bit, basically told us how to do things and stuff. We were like, turn this up, turn that down, do this, put that effect on it, and he was <laughs> like, yeah, 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 I'll do it now. And it, I know. who knows if he'd done it or no. I know. But anyway, this is Power People, for anyone who's listening. It's all one of my favourite tracks that we've done. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great vocal, great strings, great piano. Love it. This is the song we've got as big. We mixed this on a set of speakers called Yamaha NS Games. And those were the industry standards, but they had no bass in them. So, so we had to guess how loud to put bass, and we made the bass far too loud in Power People, and when they actually get it pressed, they had to compress it all the way down. The actual bass drum is so much louder on the original test pressing on the car, they had to compress can it you, down. Can you remember Tom Wilson pulled to the side at one of his gigs, and he's like, guys, you need to turn that bass down a bit, it's killing the yeah, sound yeah. system. Ah, uh, okay then, if, if Tom Wilson's telling us something doing, it's supposed to be better. We don't re-record it. We had to re-record it because of Amanda went in the studio and we heard this really strange sound in the mix down and Amanda had already gone home by the point we were just doing the actual that, that the mysterious mix. clink. We heard this click on the chorus and we just kept from hearing it. And That's right. Neil was absolutely doing it's not in the isolating it, couldn't find out where it was until we realised it had been Amanda had actually been banging her bracelet against the microphone stand on every That's right, or every note, but it wasn't exactly on time, so it was like is it no so we had to get her to come back in and re-record the whole thing again, which was a shame because it was a fantastic performance. We just got it absolutely nailed. So ever that was uh, scoring on that one, it, come, it was it was frustrating, but we came back and we got it done. I think Power People eventually but, took about three or four days, basically by the time we uh, did all the and stuff. It was three or four days in the studio is near like a normal nine to five. It was like whenever Neil turned up, which could have been any time, any time up to about midday, and until you be there. What, until midnight, uh, until Ian came and picked us up in the van. Uh, the creator. The creator. So this was the first person that we did. This just reminds me of John Downey. John, you gotta lose some weight. <laughs> exactly. No, he, he to, we resampled it and when he came and we played it to him. That was funny. Got to lose some weight. He doesn't even have a pick of weight. Uh -huh. like an extra for the Holocaust or something. You know? uh, big, big shout out to John and all the Livingston crew. Big shout out to John. Yeah, Wade and Wade and the Armit. Yeah, fantastic. Hello. Big, big shout out to those guys. Remember we used to be doing it at John's with the keyboard for some reason, I don't know why we were had the keyboard there, plugged in and just rattling out tunes and riffs. And we had this little group of people basically that kind of were getting interested in kind of what we were doing and they were passing these tapes about, we were passing, we were just lifting it straight off the keyboard, straight onto a tape deck. That's and right. Aye. This. And we were getting dead excited and we had this little gang of people that were around us, we called them the state crew and they were all Craig's Hill crew. That's right. It was amazing. Craig's Hill boys. It was good times, wasn't it? That was fantastic. Aye. I love this bit. I used to love this. these bits. I used to love this bit. The, bit, the bits from the 16s? Yeah. If that's, if... Uh, I love the sample. I am the creator. It's a bad idea asking you where the samples came from because nine times out of ten they've been stolen off of something, so I just didn't want to know. <laughs> nine times out of ten, I couldn't remember. I just <laughs> remember like rifling through my records and going, oh, I like that, I like that. <laughs> so that's why when we remix stuff, we could never quite get it the way he wanted it because I couldn't remember where I got the sounds from. 
We, we could have added a bit of delay in a few places. We could have added lots of different things. We could have just actually we worked have, yeah. In fact, Neil actually said uh, these facts, apart from our people, which we did really, really work on, which actually paid off, he said, oh, I wish he'd done that with the rest of the tracks, but we didn't have the cash. We were literally... We never, no. We were scared. We had a slot that I, I would uh, have a to basically go in and produce a track demo, and that's actually all we wanted to do. I know, and we had spent probably a lot of time on Power People, we didn't have much time or money left to do the rest. Neil had a really, really comfy seat for working in front of the console, but the other two seats had spikes going through them. Worst seats ever, so you... I know. Like, no, I, I, was, I sat on the floor half the time. <laughs> I, I sat on the floor, <laughs> like, stuck to the floor. Here we go, hardcore. I mean, the irony oh. is, it's not hardcore at all. Oh. It's just like oh. our usual oh. kind of... Happy birthday. Oh, we were shite writing lyrics. Oh, so we did better. Better place. Better place. Because that was one of your efforts. That was awful. Oh, I'm glad I've not dug that up here. I can't even find that. I know. I'm glad we don't have that. If anyone digs up that tape, I'm putting a hit on the phone. Yeah, that's it. I do not. I do not want to hear that song again. Honestly, I think the next time. I, I, I love this. I love this piano and string piece. Yeah, I me too. I remember. I remember sitting up all night writing the the wee piano bit for this, which is really simple. And it was just one of those. I just nicely, an all night uh, keyboard in the kitchen, sitting in the bunker and just perfecting all the wee bits. I, I totally remember it, I loved it. And it's, it's the same, it's, it's exactly the same hi-hat, clap and kick as in the creator, because we didn't change the sounds at all. Yeah. Remember that? Ran to the speaker. Now that is obviously my voice, but it's obviously speeded up. But we had to do it. We had to record it in a slower tempo so it speed up my voice because you didn't have time to. Uh, well, we never had time stretches. We couldn't afford a sampler. Everybody else did. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> else had time stretches. Time stretching didn't really come in properly until the kind of mid nineties properly. Well, well, when, when did the archive sampler come out? Because that's what everyone had. Uh, Remember everyone was, was using the Akai? There was different Akai samples, there was different, I don't think they all had time stretching. Time stretching was a more modern thing. Oh, this is a, this there's is a, a wee riff. I used to love that live. Used to... Ah, actually that. That was a good, that was WCA. We remixed this track another two times after this. We did the 1994 version that we play, still play now, is probably my favourite version. Ah, it's... But it is, it is good listening to this. It is. It's just takes you right back in. Mm-hmm. Takes you right back. I mean, we were we were basically writing tracks in my bedroom in John Downey's house. With the headphones. Where else did? Where else I, did? We must have been. I we must be walking around the streets of Livingston. We are. We are. I had them set up. I had them set up in Andy Arnott's as well when the when the DS came in. Basically, and they they basically came to search all the house and all the keyboards were set up in there too. But how long is this? How long is this track? Is it like oh, ten man, minutes long or something? I know, Andy. That, 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 that was you. That's it was you. always me. I, 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 just, was I Andy. just hate. I hate. It. I always it's just like, eight more bars. Eight more bars. Like no, I, was like, I kept on asking. <laughs> you know the sequence of Andy and the sequence of. Oh, by the way. Uh, do you know, I think that's. I think that's why I like kind of techno music so much, you know, like kind of modern day techno, just like because it's long, repetitive and uh, like progressive house and all that as well. I just I love just, that stuff. I just always used to think, are we going to perform this? People are going to be bored to death. I'm going to have to invent things. I didn't give a shit. Up I just had to stand behind the keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one You're the one that had to perform it. <laughs> I was like, Nick, you'll be fine. Just chuck 16 oh. more bars in there and shut up. <laughs> that's what I thought. These are like... Uh, uh, I'm not saying that. These were the four tracks that we played in the early gigs. We always used to end with our people as well. Aye. Oh, that was it. That, that was our set. People, I bet people were relieved when they heard that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> does this one not last for like 10 minutes as well? Honestly, oh, thank it, does. Uh, do you know what? We, have you ever thought that we should maybe remix this track just for a laugh? <laughs> but make, <laughs> make it like much shorter. Change all the sounds. I tell, I tell you what, it had some great bits in it. it had the, like this is we we put this through Neil's desk and we phased it and with the with the EQ. Ah right. So it's, you remember that stuff? I don't remember. I don't remember all the technicalities. I just remember and pushing buttons and flipping things over and oh, writing riffs. Aye. I just sound off that. Aye. Such a repetitive riff, though. Eh? 
take about half an hour off it and it would be a better track. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know it's quite funny that it's actually called Who the Fuck Are You? But really we should have called it Who the Fuck Are We? Who the Fuck Are You? Oh that that was us like I'll say I'm not surprised this one never made the cut. Do you see the explosion bit that said that's in this track? This is the same explosion that's in Another World, the start of Another World. We use the same sound. Ah, yeah. Uh, I that I, I hear that it. it is the same. I. Yeah. Was that for a sample CD? Norman Cook? I don't know if it was. Skip to my lips. lips. It might have been. It might have been. Uh, I'll tell you everything, what. We everything got, past we the pit. Oh, I have a value for money, Rosie. Wheel! Uh, <laughs> Rocket <it> like this. <laughs> I don't think there's a sample that we never used of that I Norman Cook CD. I think we laugh because it was the same samples when we're looking for a sample. When you're looking for a sample, you're never going to find one. You that's used to piss off and leave me doing it. And I've been going through them, everyone. That's why we try to do as many original you, ones. You'd come, back, you'd come back two days later and I'd still be listening to all the samples. <laughs> <laughs> I want CD3. Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I like this bit, that's a good bit. Yeah. It was a relief to get to this bit in the gigs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, something oh, different. I, I'm not working great. I know. Uh, and then we probably kicked it. That is quite a good beat, I think it could be great. There's no bass line in this track. Wow. Did we forget it? I just don't think we had the capacity. We didn't know. Nah. You've got to laugh, eh? Aye. But saying, saying that, this this track never really got played for that long. As soon as we, no. I think I wrote one, as soon as we wrote one more track, we ditched this one. Well, we basically sent the demo tape in, into Tom Wilson. Aye, was it us who sent it into him? Aye, so we sent him in a four track demo, um, that tape, into, into Tom Wilson. And Aye. we played the Lido club in Kirkcaldy um, a couple of days later and Ian, our manager, got a phone call from Tom Wilson saying we'd like a record deal. Oh yeah. And that's that's right. how we got our first record deal. With, based um, on Power People. Based on Power People and they took their, their next favourite track, The Creator, as, as uh, the B-side. I don't know where we are on the track, but I'm at the bit because it slows down. So anyway, so that, that, that's the four track demo. That's a four track demo. That's a four track demo and a wee bit of history. And a wee bit of info on how it came about. And, and a bit of a laugh. Stuff. Mm -hmm. And and there it is there. I'll get once you you can, you can edit all this, Nick, and I'll get this uploaded to YouTube. Perfect, so yep. you should people should be watching this on YouTube if they're watching it. YouTube, yeah, okay, okay. And so you can, you can leave some com you can leave some comments down below. I know, keep them so clean. Bye <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, bye. <laughs> right, well, we're, is that us? That's us, man, it's a wrap, okay. Right, man, cool, hold on, we've got better now.